Welcome to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as France, starting in 1920. This is episode 8, and we're going to be moving into 1923. Should be a fairly straightforward flip across. As you can see, we are in negative balance at the moment, but under construction, one of our Doucets, the Kleber, should be completed in five months' time, so we should get away with that, and then be in a good position to start designing or building some more ships. Let's see what January is going to offer us. Sell the rights to technology. Now, some people buy everything. I tend not to buy unless I've got more money than cents, which sadly isn't very often. So I'm going to say uh, no and cross fingers that we research it soon enough. 15 inch guns, minus one quality. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that will do nicely. And into February. Steel industry wants a stronger navy. Well, who doesn't want a stronger navy? Um, let's mention the importance of a strong navy. Tensions with the uh, Soviet Union have uh, popped up quite a lot. I'm not absolutely sure what advantage we can get by um, having a war with the Soviet Union. They don't really have any interesting territories over here. Of course, they do have stuff over here, but we don't. And I'm not convinced I want to move up into uh, Northeast Asia. So, yeah, I mean, it might be nice just for a short little war just to get some more prestige and things but it's not really top of my priorities here's a congo class battle cruiser i'm going to say odd uh, this is 1923 and this appears to be some sort of weird um hybrid battle cruiser slash uh, heavy cruiser it's only 16,000 tons 10 four inch guns 16 six inch guns i mean I want to call it a heavy cruiser in, in this era. Anyhow, well done, Japan, for building weird ships. Spy from Italy. <laughs> well, we're not going to handle that quietly and discreetly. And unexpected advances in stuff, which is wonderful. Into March, and our monthly balance has shot up, which is excellent. Although our total expenses are much the same, if not slightly more, Everything's still under construction, so I can only imagine that our yearly budget, oh yes, that's thrived. We started on about 293, so I'm going to build the other 10 of these and get them underway for starters. It's a bit of a hygiene thing, takes us down to 96. Um, given that uh, Calbert is only three months away, I'm going to start a new design. So reminding myself of my priorities, I'm down to priority number six, really ticking through these, I'm very pleased, is to refit the Jean Bar class of light cruisers. So that's uh, fairly straightforward. However, because I've just looked at my uh, priority list, there you go, number six, refit. But number one, keep airplane designs current. Let me just have a look how we're doing on aircraft types. So a lovely spanking new flying boat, uh, a relatively new torpedo bomber. This fighter, given that we're coming into 1923, probably needs to um, be refreshed, particularly as its range is only like 70 miles. That's terrible. This is the old flying boat, and we have a very old scout plane. Given that um, we are uh, haven't got any planes on our ships yet, that's the least of my worries. So I'm going to request a uh, new fighter priority, of course, is going to be speed and whose second priority, I still think in these early planes, reliability is probably key and just let everything else take care of itself. Right, let's have a look at the Jean Bar. So I'm looking at the Jean Bar here and I'm wondering what they're for anymore. They only have two six-inch guns. 
and 10 four inch guns. That feels like a very 1910 kind of light cruiser. And here we are in 1923. I can't significantly modernize it. We're already at minus four. If I replace the machinery and introduce some oil and push the speed up to 28 knots, which is kind of a minimum, I'd prefer it to be at least 30. We're already at minus 100 tons before we've even started to do anything that we might want to like uh, turn these four inch guns into dual purpose that's a minus 150 introduce some uh, light anti-aircraft guns that's nearly minus 200 so there isn't really a clear rebuild path of these ships so if there isn't a really clear rebuild and I'm not really seeing what point the refit would be. I mean, the refit would be cheap, about 400 francs. Um, but I've got colonial uh, gunboats coming to fulfill foreign stations. So they're not really useful for that. I can't see them operating with certainly the scouting forces. Yeah, they could be light cruisers temporarily for the... 12 inch dreadnoughts for the, the main battle line. So I'm gonna not do anything with them. And instead, and I'll keep them around until I can replace them. So let's go have a little look and see what a replacement is gonna look like. CL and auto generate. So this is a very different, <laughs> a very different and slightly lopsided design. Why has this only got one torpedo on one side? Let, come on, let's try and let's try and do that again. That's a bit better. Five six-inch guns now, all mounted on the center line. So you know, pretty reasonable arcs of fire, except actually for the for Q, the midships one. A few dual-purpose heavy anti-air and a little bit of light anti-air, and nice to see the beginnings of medium anti-air. That was one of the technologies that we developed last year. So this seems a nice intermediary cruiser it's not quite the wartime as in second world war you know two double turrets eight six inch gun things that we will be expecting in a few years time but just for this period this seems good enough what would i like to see different well i'd like to see some more torpedoes please do i want to see a lot more torpedoes yeah i think i do even though it will cut down on the anti-aircraft defense. There we go. Just need to bring down the light anti-aircraft. We are a little overweight. So just up a surprising lot. So 26,000. Okay. Just check that that's happy. Yeah, it's happy. You're happy. I'm happy. Let's go with the Taj class and send that off for a design study. Right, let's press on till April. Upheaval in Mozambique. Do I want Mozambique? I think the answer is no. Armor um, piercing, ASW. Let's go to May. A lot of uh, rebuild and scrapping in other navies, I see. So let's go to the build screen. If I'm not, I'm going to say not now. I'm going to wait until that to say class has finished. And then I've got a clear idea of how much money I've got to spend with the Tages. To June. Ah, there we are. Every once in a while, I'll get these airbase messages saying, you haven't got any planes. It's because I'm not filling up all of my air bases. I'm filling up enough to take care of either the Mediterranean or North Europe, um, and not both, because in any war, I'm likely, cross fingers, to be only actively engaged in one or the other. 2000 in the balance at the moment with the finishing of that do say. If I go to the construction, the Dix Mood is going to be ready in six months' time, but everything else is going to take at least a year. So I probably don't want to go crazy, given I've only got 9,000 in the kitty, in building these new Taj class ships. So they cost 1,000 each, so if I do two, that will put me into minus 
for a while. Let's do that. Take 20 months. And yeah, minus 500. So again, just being careful with the money whilst it's, the budget's still at uh, 333,000. Torpedo Protection 3, hooray. August. Upheaval in Hainan, down uh, on the uh, south of China. Now that is close to our holdings in Vietnam. So I think someone must shoulder the burden and guarantee this, because that would be very nice to capture. Spiraled out of control, la 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 la, criticized, etc. Fleet tactics. Always love a good fleet tactic. You have to tranche your arm on these things and sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't. Let's have a look at this British light cruiser. Very similar. It's as if the AI had designed both. So I'm happy that I've spent a little bit more, an extra 500 tons to substantially increase the uh, torpedo armament. New fighter prototype. So what have we got? So our existing one, maximum speed 120, so okay. It's the range. Um, so range at light, 109, which is significantly better than the rest. So we will go with the launch. Slight improvement in the monthly balance because of a very pleasant hike in our yearly budget. That part of it is going very well. Ah, sudden slump in the economy. Nice thing about this is that it affects everybody uniformly and it cuts uh, national income by around about four, maybe 5%. Um, you get one of these every decade or so. The choices are to refuse to make cuts, to give some money to charity or to consider social reforms. Now, given that our current unrest level is zero, slightly odd for France, but I'll take it. I'm going to say, no, I don't want any further cuts. Look at the international situation. Look at those Bolsheviks. You can't trust them. Our yearly budget still went down from 150 something to 148, but not by as much as I'd feared. You may be asking why I haven't put uh, any of my ships into reserve or into mothball. Now, it's a perfectly viable strategy. It does save you a ton of money, but it costs. And the cost is to your crew quality. Now, you can do it, but you time it per perfectly. You put things in mothballs and reserve, crew quality collapses, then you see an impending war. So currently we're up to 10 against uh, the Soviet Union. You bring them out of reserve and out of mothball and exercise them in order to raise their crew quality back up again. And had I thought this was going to be a longer piece than it seems to be turning out, and yes, just because it's 10 with the Soviet Union doesn't mean that it can't just float around at 10, but I, I feel in my bones we're going to have war with the Soviet Union soon, then that is a very, very uh, useful strategy for saving money and building up your resources. That's why I, I haven't done it here. And so into December. And our first proper light carrier has entered service. Excellent. During speed trials, it's found to have easily surpassed its design speed. Well, you don't find that often on French ships. So let's see what we've got here. So I'm going to say no to all at the moment. I can manage my air groups. Now I had put a couple here and their experience is fair. And I'm going to put them onto the X mood. We have a little look at our new carrier. You see it can do 29 knots. Yeah, okay. Well, that's what we designed it for, isn't it? For the build. No, we designed it for 28. So thank you for that. So with the money freed up from the carrier, I'm going to go back 
and build a couple more of these Taj light cruisers. That will uh, that will be nice to see those come out. Now tensions the Soviet Union has gone net down to nine. I think actually I can beat the Soviet Union without breaking into a sweat. So I've sort of talked myself into what I am usually reluctant to do. I'm going to put a lot of these into reserve and start to build up some funds for a nice new shiny battleship. So these guys are going to be mothballed. Takes their maintenance from nearly 300 down to 50. You pay uh, about 20% whilst in mothball. You pay 50% whilst in reserve. These Jean Barts and Lavoisier are going to go also into mothballed. These chaps, all these obsolescent ones, they're desperately needing a refit, I know. I've uh, slightly neglected them. Also into mothballs. So that keeps our best units in uh, in active status if you put everything into reserve then you can't react to things when upheavals occur you really have no chance of success of sending anything out so that will do for now that's pretty much the year so if we have a little look at the year in summary we can see that we've stopped the refit activity because we decided the jean bars weren't worth it and instead have a healthy construction program with the carrier being completed 20 colonial gunboats under construction and four new light cruisers. One of the Desais got rebuilt, so there's one remaining uh, still under construction. Finances, nipping and tucking, as you can see, the balance here hovering around zero and minus numbers throughout. Only five new techs compared to eight last year, and only a couple of tension events. So you can see. We're kind of all right with everybody, except for the Soviet Union that's got worse, but it has been worse during the year. Slightly concerning is that we're not really friends with anybody. It would be nice to have, you know, one of these Germany or Britain or America uh, at zero, particularly because we're sort of looking for them to build our heavy ships. And the budget's taken a, a hefty lift upwards, which is just what we need. And it's just a classic post-war year of steady progress and development. Next year, I probably want to look at some of those destroyers that are still obsolete and see what I can do to refit them, at least to remove the maintenance penalty and whether anything can be done to say, increase their ASW armament. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I certainly have and see you next time.